Purpose of life spirit of Amen Camp Hamiti Hebrew Ethics is to provide an inside story of black African spiritual and religious heritage and the actual practice that we must put in place today in our personal life so that we can be able to turn around the misperception and the oppressive nature of this earth when we uh, the global powers and global forces drive us back and drive us down into the ground now without the fundamentals of understanding the black african spiritual and religious heritage we are all going to catch hell from those who have studied these same life principles and formulated strategies and agendas against us and let me say uh, this black african spiritual and religious principles work because they are the ones that are used and being used amid in a, a way that they should not be applied but they are running this earth the, then the question that comes is okay which books should we study then and why should we study those books and which language or languages should we study or should we use why should we learn and why should we use that language and perhaps one more critical question is what is the religion or teaching of life spirit of amen hebrew ethics or kamiti hebrew ethics it will take hours and hours to answer what life spirit of a man came teaches however it is clear that we should tell people that we use the torah the prophets the new testament ancient egyptian books five mythic scriptures two books with mystical uh, ritual philosophies and four books of wisdom texts I shall elaborate on these other books later and how they come into play but I want to quickly say learn an African language especially a language with a click learn to use that language and to speak it don't learn Arabic don't learn modern uh, Hebrew learn ancient Arabic ancient Hebrew with that you are in a position to understand what the ancient sages taught and to decode for yourself their truth it says it says in one of them uh the, the sayings of our ancient thinkers black thinkers self knowledge is the basis of true knowing soul to heaven body to earth why then do we use the torah because there are perceptions or teachers that say the torah is not right that it came by the colonizer that it was given by uh, 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 the enslaver to co to control the brain and the thinking of the black people or the black slave first and foremost we must understand why the black person was enslaved uh, how the black person was enslaved and how the black person can remove slavery from him and from her brain and her life because this is a political, economic, technological and social cultural war as well as a spiritual war. However, what I want to say concerning the Torah is this. The black Africans wrote the Torah, translated the Torah for the Greeks and Europeans. What proof is there? First look at the geography of the Torah. The geography itself tells you that the Torah was not written by anyone else who did not know Africa or anyone else who was not an African if you read Genesis chapter 2 verse 10 to 14 you find the description of the African continent you also find in that description the location of the garden of Eden as well as the primordial man who was known as Adam now Adam and also the derivative atom which is the scientific term atom 
popularized by the Greeks, you also find the mother of humanity there carrying an Egyptian goddess name, Geb, so called Seb, or Eve. The Egyptian god Eve, now called Geb, or Seb, or Guvu, or Kuvu. No other continent is described in the Torah, save only as a nickname or a pejorative term, and as well as a strange land far away. You also find that there is a term Havila in Genesis chapter 2, which is an African and Bantu term Avila or Mavirira, sunset or west. If you draw a line, the original demarcation line that was drawn across the surface of the earth, passing through the large pyramid, down to South Matopo, right into uh, the Antarctica, you find that her villa is set to the west. That line would later be changed by Europe to become the GMT now that passes in Europe. There was no Middle East, it's all Northeast Africa. The white Arabs came from Europe via Rome and later Turkey. The current Jews who are in Israel, who control Israel, came from Poland, Russia, Germany, and other European zones. And also, some of them came from Spain. You can Google this and study the Kasarian Convention. Convention. The Torah and the Bible clearly teaches that the Hebrews were just the same and the similar to the Egyptians, Ethiopians, Sumerians, and that all of these people were of dark-skinned or African nature. Esau, who was light-skinned, is described as ruddy. He was also known as an albino. Joseph was indistinguishable from Egyptians when his brothers visited them in Genesis 39 14. The skin color, the hair color, the type of hair described in Leviticus 13 vis a vis lepros, and the golden hair and the long stretch hair is not of African beginning. It is a diseased state of the dark skin. From dark skin to pale skin is described in Exodus 4 verse 6. Only African hair develops locks or rastafar, the six and nine of the African hair, which is the shape of the universe. So we have got other people like King Solomon who describes himself as black and beautiful in his songs 1 verse 5 to 6. We have got totems which are found in Genesis 49 and all of these totems are known as Egyptian totems or Egyptian gods. We've got the very similar names of, uh, of people that are found in the Torah. And the, these names are contextually correct. Consider the king who troubled uh, Israel, known as Nebuchadnezzar today. His actual name is Nebuchadnezzar. Consider uh, Joseph, whom we have spoken of. He had his name changed to an ancient African name, Zafanati. That was his name, Zafanati. He was like them. We have got a, a woman who was almost starving and has a book in the Torah, uh, in, in the Bible, in the prophets, minor prophets. Called, you call her Ruth, Ruth, Ruth today. But her actual name is Ruthe because they were starving here and Maone a reverse which we you now call Naomi you have got the, a, a, a governor was born in Babylon who was called Jarwe Babel you call him Zerubbabel Abraham had the third wife you call today you have a nickname you call that small house small house actually Abraham's small house was actually called small house or small grand house Katura you call her Ketura. That's what that they have twisted our our they twisted so that you cannot easily locate this. Here now is the thing: if the Europeans wrote the Bible, do you think they would purposely put Africa as the only continent there? Would you think they would not put themselves as the top? Why would they leave verses like Genesis 10:4, which describes European Europe as an island of Gentiles? 
the, the, the one place Europe is referred to is called Gentile, Gentile Island. Why would you think the Europeans would leave songs of Solomon 1 verse 5 which says I am black and beautiful there? Is there any other race that can be called that? None. The Bible, when it says I am black and beautiful, it tells the truth. Would you find uh, the, 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 the prophecies that describes Africans, that describe the greatness of Egypt, the greatness of Ethiopians, the athleticism of black people? You wouldn't. All I can say is this. The Torah is a derivative that was crafted by ancient Africans who wrote it for the Greeks, the Romans, and other Europeans. In it, they included certain keys which point to its source. And this is what I have already described. I stand to be corrected if I am wrong here because I am finding that there are two extreme doctrinated positions which are in play, especially by our black brothers here in the United States of America. They are falling on the cross of the source and interpretation and they are grasping the source and interpretation which is erroneous to facts and which does not admit facts i stand to be corrected someone must come up and tell me that genesis 2 does not describe africa that a uh, black and beautiful does not describe the black person which is what the european interpret interpretation carries today Lastly, I just want to describe about the source. There are only two sources of your religion today. Your religion will either be coming from Babylon and either Egypt. When it is coming from Egypt, it should have an African interpretation. When it is coming from Europe, it will have a European interpretation. And hence, you will find that you a, a white Jesus, a white God, white angels, European Jesus, Europe, or Bogias. You find you find all these coming from Europe and the interpretation being European. And then you will find that you can entertain fake stories like the case of harm and, 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 and the back, backwardness or the uh, or, or the genetic backwardness of black people as interpreted as in as an interpretation that comes from the source if your source is uh, Europe. However, if your source is uh, African, you will be able to understand the spiritual as well as the physical nature of the Torah. I shall look forward to your contributions and your suggestions and your criticisms, but in conclusion, our source of knowledge, our book source of knowledge is still written on stone in ancient Egypt is summarized in the book of coming forth by day so-called book of the dead which we interpret in its original state by understanding its original purpose and its original intent. I subscribe to this channel. Thank you. A goodbye.